Okay, so this is a quick interview or a preview on how the software works for taking an object and slicing it. First off is we would like to acknowledge that a lot of work was done for the people at Repetier Host and that we still use a lot of their graphics drivers. We've enhanced the program a lot for our own needs, but we wanted to tell them thank you and publicly acknowledge their input and uh, basically making it possible to get this done in such a time frame. So uh, thank you very much, and on we go. Okay, so in front of you, you see the typical power on screen, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go, and we could load an STL. So let's go and see if we've got an STL up here that we'd like to slice. And uh, that's a pretty big one, so let's go for a little bit smaller one. And I will actually uh, go back up here. We're going to go to one of our repositories where we have lots of stuff. And I am looking for like the square dome. We'll pick an easy one that lets people see how it works. And, um, well, I guess I might want to go by name. And square dome. And there's no STL file there. So, guess what? We will go pick something else. Uh, ooh, spine cover. And how will we take that? And now you can see that it's really small. And the reason for that is it's drawn in inches, and this is set up for metrics. So we click this button here, and now it's the right size. Now, I'm purposely going to build this thing upside down. And the reason for it is, is that I'm going to show you how support material comes into play and how we visualize it. So here you can see it's, it's uh, there, but it's not loaded. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this part and we're going to justify it to the build platform. So you click on any of the translation buttons, X or Y, and uh, here, and then you just hit the bullseye. And now it's centered and justified to the build platform. And um, so if you didn't like this, you can change the aspect ratio and you can actually, let's scale the X to 10. There, you can see we squished it up, or I'm going to say, you know what, I want to go 30. So you can see that we have complete control in all three axes. And uh, I'm going to lock the aspects ratio, and I'm going to click that again to 25.4, which is the scaler. But, you know, I'm going to unlock it, and I'm going to say, you know what, I want to stretch that Z up. So look at that. I am making the Z bigger and bigger and bigger. You can see how it goes fatter and fatter. Uh, so now I'll click on here and translate it, and I've just made this thing a lot fatter. Looks just like me after a buffet. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to lock the aspect ratio here. Everything's scaled back normal. Now you can see it's floating up above it. Again, you grab the translation, hit the bullseye. It's ready to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's uh, grab the slicer. And I've picked a, a recipe for ABS that SPRT stands for support in my nomenclature. And we're just going to go ahead and slice it. And we're slicing it with Slick 3R, which is better known as Slicer 3. And uh, you'll see right now it's sitting here and it's slicing away. And uh, just a few moments here, it should be done. Eh, it might take 20 or 30 seconds. So Now, you can load as many of these objects as you want. It's very straightforward. And uh, again, place them. You can also add what we call uh, frog fingers or frog toes, and they're a little flat disc that you put in the corners to offer a, a additional adhesion. And uh, now it's done slicing, and it's given us an estimated print time of 2 hours and 38 minutes. So let's go in, and let's see how the support material was generated. And you can see the support material is in an off uh, color there. So now we're going to go to the 3D visualization. So the extruder head 1 is the primary plastic we're using. Extruder head 2 is the support material. So in this case, we would have set that up with PLA, and this one would be ABS, and this would all be stored. And uh, we're going to actually change that a little bit. And now you can see I've removed the visualization for the support material. So you can see the part, and now we're going to put the support material back into it. And if you want to, you can actually reverse view it, only we have a, an anomaly here where the, uh, the viewer is not working perfect yet. And you can see the black spot where the shadow is cast off of the main material. So uh, fortunately, in this case, you can see the support material disappear as it's correctly supposed to do. And so we're ready to go. That's all it takes to print this. And uh, you would just 
set it up. Now, people are going to say to me, great, but what if I want to change and I'm going to make a stripe? I want to change the plastic in here. No problem. How hard is it to tell it where to go for a specific layer? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the G code editor. I'm going to go near the bottom. And let's just go up. Yeah, let's go up about to here. And let's go find the next Z. And there we go. And so I'm actually going to stick in here T3. And once I do that, it should come back. And let's go under Visual Settings. Uh, actually, it's not letting me do it. And I'm not sure why. So let's go back and see what's going on. Oh, because it changed right back to T1. <laughs> you know, it doesn't do any good to go T1 if you're going to do uh, the very next instruction. Let's change it back to head 2. So I am actually going to go back a couple of layers, just one layer up here. Well, I say we find that. There you go. And now I'm going to do T1, T3. There. And so you can see that that will tell it to print the last lid in the yellow one. And you're going to say, I don't want yellow material. I want uh, blue material. So we're going to stick a rich blue material on there. And there you go. And you're going to say your support material is PLA and it's trash brown or trash gray. So there you go. That's a better visualization. And really, all you have to do is that very thing. There is a, a set of procedure for setting the offsets on the heads. But in the actual code itself, to define what head to, to print with, you only have to give it the T command. Now, if you need to do certain types of pre-warming and stuff like that, we look ahead to see where the head, head will be used. It should be at temperature at the time you're calling it up. Um, and for sure, there'll be bugs in our software at the moment, but you can be sure that as we go forward, those will be wrung out as well. Okay, so there you go. That's a pretty good thing for you to get started on. And uh, yeah, there's a, a simple scaling, manipulating, and slicing software on how to print multiple heads. You have a nice day.